Hi, welcome to another video in my series where I'm looking at what method one should use to find the value of an integral. And we've decided that it's to take a systematic approach. And in the first video, if you looked at that, we discussed the first step, which was, is it a standard integral? Is it one that you can just recognize straight away? If it isn't, the second check was to check out whether it was a product. Now, if it's neither a standard integral nor a product, what do we do next? Well, that's the aim of this video. The third check is to see if it's a fraction. That is that it's got some function of x in the denominator. So I've got here a selection of integrals which are fractions and have got a function of x in the denominator. And if you're approaching this as part of your revision and you're familiar with how we handle integrals like this, then you might just want to pause the video and have a go. If not, what I'm going to do is take you through each of these integrals, how we look at them, and uh, just give you the solutions. If you really want to dig deeper into the methods, then do go back and look at my earlier tutorials on these. So what we're looking at then is this step three. Is it a fraction? Now, if it is, we've got to break down the type of fraction that we've got. And the first thing I would want to check is this, that is it of the form where we've got in the denominator some function of x, but in the numerator we've got the first differential of f of x, f dash x if you like, or f prime x as some people say. And in earlier tutorials I showed you that the result was the natural log of the modulus of the denominator f of x. And then we got the constant of integration c. So when I look at this first integral, that's the check that I would want to make. And in the denominator, I've got x cubed minus 5. And if I differentiate that with respect to x, I get 3x squared, which you'll see in the numerator. So this is clearly one of these types. And so the answer then will be the natural log of the modulus of x cubed minus 5. And then we've got the constant of integration c. Now in the second integral, if we look at the denominator, we've got x squared minus 3. And if we differentiate x squared minus 3 with respect to x, you're going to get 2x. But uh, you can see that we've just got x on the top, not 2. But this is still OK, because what we can do is introduce that constant 2x as long as we have a half there. Half times the 2 just returns the x. We can always do this kind of thing if we're working with constants. So we can see that the answer then will be a half times the natural log of the modulus of x squared minus 3. What I'll do though is I'll just take that half out because that's how the integral looked at first. So when we go on to the next integral, I would be looking to perform this check here. If I take the denominator 5x minus 7 all cubed and were to differentiate it, there's no way that I get 5 or a constant, if you like, because we've got a constant on the top. If I differentiate the denominator by the chain rule, I'd end up with 15 times all of 5x minus 7 squared. Nothing like the top then. So how do I look at this type of integral? Well, this is the second check that we do. And it has this particular format where we've got f of x in the denominator raised to a power n. And in the numerator, you've got the first differential of f of x. So in this example here, if we take f of x to be 5x minus 7, n is the 3, but you can see that if you differentiate 5x minus 7, you get 5. So if you've got a type like this, you can see that you integrate it by inspection or substitution. 
Now, if you're using substitution, the substitution you would make is always U. You can use obviously any other letter, but if you use U, you always put it to the f of x value. So in this example, the substitution I would use would be to let u equal 5x minus 7. And if you use that substitution or do it by inspection, you'll end up with minus a half times all of 5x minus 7 to the power minus 2, plus that constant of integration c. So when I look at this next integral here, I check out my first idea. If I differentiate the denominator, do I get a constant times the top? Well, differentiating the bottom here, 2x minus 1, there's no way that it's a multiple of 3x. So it's not going to be this type here. And it certainly isn't this type here. We haven't got the denominator raised to a power n. So how do we do ones like this? Well, the next check is to see whether the denominator can factorize and whether we can split it up into partial fractions. So that's the next check. Can it be split into partial fractions? And this one can be because we can factorize the denominator here. It factorizes to x minus 2 times x plus 1. And the partial fractions that you get are 2 over x minus 2 and plus 1 over x plus 1. I'll leave it to you just to check these out. Now, once you've done this, each of these fractions is easily integrated. In fact, both of them are of this type, natural log type. And if you do the first one here, you'll get 2 times the natural log of the mod of x minus 2. And for this one, this is the natural log of the mod of x plus 1. So we end up with this result here. Now when it comes on to this next integral here, what I'd want to do is again check to see whether differentiating the denominator gives me the numerator. Differentiating the denominator gives us 2x, not 2x plus 1. So it's not of the first type, and it's certainly not the second type. Can I split it into partial fractions? Does the denominator factorize? Well, you can't factorize x squared plus 1. So what do we do? Well, the next step is to check to see whether the integral can be written as two or more fractions by splitting the numerator with the denominator and so make each fraction possible to integrate. So with this example here, what I can change this to is this. We can say it's the same as integrating 2x over x squared plus 1, and then the 1 over x squared plus 1. Now, when it comes to this first fraction here to integrate, carry out this check here, and we notice that differentiating the denominator gives us 2x, which is exactly the, what we've got on the numerator here. So this is going to be a natural log of x squared plus 1. And for this second one, well, you may or may not have covered this one. This is a standard integral. It depends on your specification. It is, in fact, the inverse tan of x. So here's our results then for that integral. The natural log then of x squared plus 1 plus the inverse tan of x plus the constant of integration. You notice as well I haven't got this natural log in mods because this term here x squared plus 1 will always be a positive value. Well, that brings us now to the end of this video and the end of this series where I've shown you what I would do when it comes to checking through an integral and the methods that we would use. So I hope that's given you enough confidence to handle integrals then at this level.